hey guys welcome back to another video in the series of devops projects and as you know that this is the second project and in this video we are going to discuss about a few things that we need to automate this project so if you remember in the last video we discussed uh, about how we did um, what were the prerequisites for this course and we discover described about how do we destroy the vms and all that stuff so in today's video we are going to describe how these shell files that we have created that will be used to automate this environment in the first project if you have gone through all the things everything was done through a manual effort and now we are going to do it through shell file so uh if you're new over here i would like to request that please subscribe the channel because it's, it supports me to create more content so without further ado let us understand what exactly we need to do in order to get this thing automated now as you can see on the screen this is the github profile uh, logic ops lab and this is the v profile project okay you'll be able to find it and i hope you are aware that we have to be in local setup then we have to go inside v profile uh, project and then vagrant and then automated provisioning if i go a bit back you can see that this is the one that we were using previously but now we have to use automated provisioning okay once you go inside you'll be able to see a lot of files over here okay so these are the files that uh, that are here and you can take a look at all the files the thing that we have to concentrate on is this vagrant file and this vagrant file will make a call to these files let us understand how do we do that okay so uh, i hope you have uh, cloned it in the repository i have already done it if you are over here if you can see the screen then this has already been completed and i recommend that you should do it in your local so that you can do it manually uh, you can just run it and have a proper grip on these files okay now i have installed visual studio code and i have opened these files so the first file that we are going to talk about the most important file is the vagrant file okay so all we have to do in this vagrant file these are the things that we need to do and we have changed the order if you remember the order uh, this is a bit different in this vagrant file the important thing is make sure that these ips are different in the vagrant file if you want to understand what exactly is a vagrant file then there are videos available on on my channel through which you can exactly understand what exactly is a vagrant okay so i'll just show you what exactly i was talking about so what is vagrant and how it works you can take a look at this video what is vagrant how does it work so this would be much helpful okay let's circle back over here now these are the ips that are different you can see because i don't want everything to clash okay so the first thing that we are going to set up is a db second thing we are going to set up is memcached third thing would be rabbitmq then we'll talk about the tomcat vm in which we'll do the application part and then we'll talk about the nginx server so this would be our web in which we are going to do it these are the names that you already know web 01 app 01 rm rmq 01 mc 01 and db 01 these are the names that's going to appear on oracle virtual box so if you remember in the last video we talked about that oracle virtual box was there but everything got deleted because we switched it every we deleted everything okay so you can see there is nothing over here okay let me minimize this now this is the name that you can see this is the centos that is going to use the db is going to use and the most important is this path in which it is going to trigger that mysql.sh file now if you go over here you can see this is mysql hs file sh file basically so sh dot is like a shell file a lot of people ask like why, what is this the meaning of this shebang so this is an interview type of a question what is the importance of this shebang so you just have to google it i won't be telling it over here okay so this is the one thing that you have to do google so we are setting up the database pa uh, password which is admin123 and we are updating whole of this if you remember in the first project we all all of these commands were executed manually but right now we'll be doing it through a sh file which is the automated file for shell scripting okay and then uh, we are enabling the mariadb server we are just starting the mariadb service we are enabling it if you remember enable is used for uh, if if you ever restart the service or you restart the vm basically then the service would be automatically started you don't have to go every time and restart it okay then we are going to change the directory to temp directory and i'm going to clone this http github uh, this is the one which i cloned it from you can change it to the uh, my one or yours okay so both of things are different so that's what we are going to do it over here let me change it to my project control z so i can change the name over here which is mine logic ops lab 
if you have your channel and you have fogged this then you can what you can do is you can give your name over here okay so this is something after that these are the commands that we ran manually mysql admin i'm going to give a root password for the database pass for i'm doing everything through a root user update mysql with set password this and where user is equal to root user after that i'll be deleting mysql user where root equal to this localhost this and the ip address of the localhost okay after that what i'm going to do here is delete from mysql user where user is this delete from mysql db where db test or db test slash this is called backslash underscore after that, all i'll flush all the privileges create database account and grant all the privileges on all accounts to admin at late localhost identified by admin123 and this is something what we did it over here okay so this is the password that we did let me push it over here so that you can see it clearly okay so this is done once this is done i'll just grant our privileges account this is done i'll go to the accounts tmp v profile project src main sources db backup sql so this backup sql you can take a look through let me open it and show you so if i'll go over here you can find the file so this uh let me let me push it over here and then see where are we seeing this so this is v profile project src main resources and db backup sql so what i'll do is i'll just drag it over here and see where are the file so v profile project this is the v profile project we are in there now src main resources so i'm going to src and i'll go to main and then i'll go to resources after that resources you can see what is the file that we are calling db backup sql so db backup sql uh, is the file that we are looking for okay so we were looking into the master so that's not the one i have to go to local setup and here i should look my bad sorry and then you can see this is the db backup sql file okay so this is these are the script that you have to uh, you have to run it but you have, don't have to do it manually so whenever this is going to run whatever your process over here is it is going to run the file so you do not have to uh, worry about this okay then we'll just flush the privileges once this is done we'll just restart the mariadb server and then you have to give sudo sudo is for root system ctl and then restart the mariadb once done starting the firewall and allowing the mariadb to access the port 3306 which is the default one and make sure that this does not support or this, this is not running any other services okay once done you have to uh, enable the firewall and then uh, you have to get the active zones and then uh, you have to make this ip address uh, sorry this port has to be uh, added because in order to contact with this port uh, with this db you need to add this in order to make it working okay so the applications can talk to each other after that this is one of the most important steps which is known as reload otherwise this won't work okay once done you have to just restart the mariadb okay so this is one thing that you have to do let's go back to the code okay now the second thing is let's go to the vagrant file again this is my vagrant file and the second thing we are going to set up is memcached so memcached mc01 would be the name and then it is also going to use the CentOS. Everything is CentOS except the last one, which would be your Ubuntu. Okay, let's understand this. Now, in this MC01 CentOS, this is the name. This is the private network. Private network because these are going to talk to each other through a private network. We are not exposing it to the public. Okay, and then this is the IP address. And then it is going to run the memcache.sh file. Memcache.sh file is where? Here. Let's go there. Okay, this is the file over here. And then sudo yum install epl release via this is we are going to update it and then sudo yum install memcached hyphen y why this is hyphen y i have already explained that it won't prompt and ask you it will do everything automatically this is kind of a yes and then system ctl start memcached and then enable enable i have already explained why do we use it and then status and then sudo memcached hyphen p11211 this is the port that we are going to give it that's all it is going to run so that we that's what we run manually and now it is going to run automatically through a shell file okay uh, so this is we already have discussed okay so let's go back to the memcache sorry vagrant file now these two things we have discussed the db and the memcache remaining are rabbitmq tomcat in the nginx which is the three things remaining uh, i don't want to create uh, uh, this video a lot of law uh, like a big video because uh, it it 
becomes quite cumbersome to understand a lot of things when uh, I'll, I'll be creating a separate video for this RabbitMQ and Tomcat and Nginx server so that it would be easier for you to understand. And in the next video, not not next, next to next video, what I'll do is I'll just run it in order to understand like what exactly is happening. Okay, so uh, I hope you guys have understood this part. Whatever I have told you in this video, just try to do that way and then uh, just go through the video understand what exactly is happening if you have any questions related to mysql file memcache file or whatever i have explained today feel free to comment below and we will address that so thanks guys and i'll see you in the next one